Hello, welcome to Damn Right, Winning at Digital Asset Management. I'm your host, Chris Lucinic, CEO of digital asset management consulting firm, AVP. The topic of focus in today's episode is damn strategy. It's almost easier to talk about what strategy is not than to talk about what it is. Strategy is not hopes and ambitions. For instance, it is not a strategy to say that we want to maximize the value of our digital assets. Strategy is not simply the opposite of a problem statement. For instance, it is not a strategy to diagnose the problem as no one being able to find the assets they need, and then to simply say that your strategy is to ensure that people will be able to find the digital assets they need. Strategy is not an observation or a statement such as our organization will be the premier example of what effective digital asset management looks like. Strategy is not a priority. It's not a strategy to say that user satisfaction is your main focus over the next 12 months. And strategy is not a goal or result. It's not a strategy to say that we will have 10,000 users or 1 million assets in the dam by such and such a date. It's not that there's anything wrong with any of these statements, of course. They all have a place in the process and messaging. It's just that none of them are strategies. But statements just like these get used as strategic language all the time. And the outcome of having a bad strategy, or even no strategy, is that it leaves the organization unable to harness its power in a focused and cohesive way in order to achieve goals, dreams, and overcome challenges so that it can thrive and succeed. So what is a strategy, you might be asking? And more specifically, what is a digital asset management strategy? I'm so glad to have Kara Van Malsen with me here today to help answer that question. Kara is someone that thinks deeply about digital asset management and the organization that surrounds the practice. Kara is a thought leader, an expert practitioner, and an amazing communicator. She's the creator of the DAM operational model, which we use in our work at AVP routinely, and which is available for free to anyone who wants to put it to use for themselves. And most recently, Kara has created the DAM Strategy Canvas, along with a guide on how to put it to use. This most recent piece is why I've invited Kara to join us today, so that we can better understand why a DAM strategy is important, what a DAM strategy is, and to help you create your own. Kara has been working in digital asset management since 2006 and is one of the leading thinkers and practitioners in this space. Of course, I'm biased because Kara is also a partner and managing director at AVP, but that doesn't make it any less true. You'll hear it for yourself in this episode. Kara is driven by a passion for helping organizations build impactful DAM programs with deep expertise in systems thinking, user experience design, library science, and business analysis with extensive DAM experience. Her portfolio ranges from Fortune 500 powerhouses to esteemed cultural heritage institutions and transformative nonprofits. Beyond her consulting role, Kara frequently shares her insights at conferences and workshops around the globe. She has taught at NYU and Pratt and has been involved as a trainer in a number of amazing global initiatives, including ICROM. Also, she's just simply an awesome person, and I'm thrilled to have her launch the inaugural episode of Damn Right with me. Let's jump in and remember, damn right because it's too important to get wrong. Kara Van Malsen, welcome to the Damn Right Podcast. I'm so excited to have you here today to talk about a topic that is near and dear to your heart, digital asset management strategy. Uh, you've just written a piece on this that we're gonna dive into in depth uh, but I, one of the reasons that I'm so excited to talk to you about this today is because I think in the conference circuit, surprisingly, strategy is a topic that doesn't get talked about much. So I think it's really important. Um, and I'm glad that we have someone like yourself who is a thought leader in this realm and, and is an expert practitioner to talk to us today. So thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Chris. I'm excited to be here and uh, looking forward to talking about damn strategy. Before we dive in, I'd love for you to just tell me a bit about yourself. What's your background? What's your history? How did you get into digital asset management and to give us some insight into what your approach is today? So my background is in archives and specifically moving image archives. So I have a master's degree in moving image archiving and preservation from NYU. Um, and so my intention was to go into film and television preservation, archiving. This was in the early 2000s, so this was really pre-YouTube, pre-internet video, but kind of started in the digital space early on. And um, so I was working in that kind of around 2005, 2006. And, um, you know, it's it, it fast forward some years and we were kind of working on 
how do we get all these things into digital form? What's going to happen when everything's shot in, you know, digitally and file-based media? A few years later, that happened. So everything was digital. And it was, um, you know, kind of, uh, it was no longer the case that there was such an enormous difference between the needs of video content versus other kind of content. It was just going into big pools and buckets of content in general. And so that all needed to be cared for in a way so that it would, could be leveraged by organizations to help them kind of fulfill their mission or whatever they needed to do with it. And so it just evolved from there. It was just like, well, it's all digital now. Let's figure out what to do with this stuff. Um, so that's kind of how I got into it and I'm still into it today. Do you think that that background gives you a different perspective than maybe uh, folks that have come at it from a different angle? Do you think that that gives you any particular, you know, unique insights? I think there are several places that people come from that are in this field. So it could be that they have an archive or library science background like me. Some people come to it from the production side, the creative operations side, and they sort of realize, you know, this could all be done so much better if we just had a better handle on these assets. Um, I do think those two perspectives are very different. Those of us who have library science type backgrounds are kind of standards driven. We're very much about, um, you know, just making sure that the librarian side of things is all right. Whereas the other people coming from a creative background are going to see it from the perspective of the creative team and the kind of the operations and sort of the end product of the, the marketing collateral that you can produce from these these assets or kind of other product um, related collateral. So I think we come at it from different perspectives. And as you evolve into the career, you start to broaden your understanding of um, you know, the perspective. So at a certain point, I don't know, it all blends together. I think I have other interests that I bring to this space. So things like user experience design, is something I'm very interested in and passionate about, um, kind of uh, just in strategic thinking in general, which is, I think, how I ended up landing on, let's do something about damn strategy. So, Yeah, it's interesting. Any, anybody that knows you knows that you are always creating and thinking and, and trying to uh, improve on, on things that are done. And it, interestingly, uh, things like uh, operational models and user experience design and strategy are almost certainly not in uh, film studies or archival programs or, or digital asset management programs. So uh, you've shown that uh, you know, you're bringing a, uh, your interest to the table uh, outside, of your, outside of your background and, and kind of formal studies, which is great. Um, so let's talk about the digital asset management strategy canvas. Uh, you've created this piece. It's a it's a kind of one page piece, uh, and it's got an accompanying guide that explains like how to use it. Um, so you know, I I'd like to focus on it as a way to talk about strategy at, at large, like what what strategy looks like and how people should approach it. So could you tell us to start? Could you just give us an overview of what the canvas is all about and kind of how it came to be? Yeah, so the, the canvas is kind of, um, it's, a, it's a nod uh, to those great canvas creators out there, like the folks that created the business model strategy, the business model canvas, the folks at Strategizer, um, and things like that. So I sort of love those types of simple, visual kind of thinking and idea generation tools. Um, so I'm really drawn to that sort of thing. So that's first of all, where some of the inspiration came from. But in general, um, the idea behind the canvas is just to have a, a tool that's gonna guide you in thinking about your damn strategy and kind of give you a place to jot down and kind of uh, generate ideas about what should be in your strategy. So it's, it's not like the strategy is the canvas, it's more of a thinking tool to help you plan, ideate, and kind of uh, have conversation around the creation of a strategy for digital asset management. So it's just a way of organizing your thoughts and ideas and, and kind of being able to work with those in a way that's sort of flexible and fluid in a visual sort of form. You can use it in person. If you were to kind of be in a meeting, you might have it in a larger form printout or people could have their own copies, but it's also nice, something you can throw in a virtual whiteboard in a, in a Zoom session and throw sticky notes on it and things like that. So that's, that's kind of what it is at, at, at its heart. It's, 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 a, it's a planning tool and, and a thinking tool. Thinking about 
using it as a tool, um, should someone who's putting it to use think about the steps that lay out that you lay out on the canvas as a way to arrive at a strategy? It itself is, you know, these individual components are not the strategy. They're helping you arrive at your strategy. Is that the right way to think about it? Yeah, I think that's fair to say. I think what you'll ultimately come up with and document in that canvas will amount to a strategy. But a strategy and the success of a strategy comes down to how it's articulated, how it's communicated, you know, how it's shared, how you're kind of managing conversation around it. So I don't think you can just say, we made a canvas, we're done, we have a strategy, let's go. Um, so ultimately, you'll have to synthesize what you have there, get it in a form that's uh, meaningful to your stakeholders in order to generate buy-in and, and support and, and trust and things like that. So just to help everybody align. But it's a great um, conversation starter. So if you're working with stakeholders as you're generating a strategy, it's a way to kind of help um, guide that conversation. It's really what it's for. But the totality of the things you'll capture in the canvas should make up the damn strategy. These are the things you really need to think about and be concerned with uh, making decisions on as you're creating a damn strategy. For people who don't have the damn strategy canvas in front of them, haven't seen it yet, could you walk us through kind of what, you know, and, and this, this might be too big of an ask, uh, but kind of what some of the salient steps are, how someone would work their way through it? Like, what are the components of the canvas? Yeah, um, I'll try to do that kind of succinctly since, um, yeah, it could go on and on. But it starts with the question of what is the challenge that we're addressing here? So if you think about strategy in general and kind of go back to like this strategy um, kind of big thinkers, strategy comes out of military um, originally. And then in the late 20th century, mid to late 20th century is kind of adapted to corporate strategy and business strategy. And those, both of those cases, the question is, how do we win? So if we're in a military context, we're thinking like, how do we win this battle, this war? In a corporate strategy, like how do we, how do we win this uh, category or, you know, this, you know, how do we differentiate in this market? And so people now apply strategy kind of at different layers of an organization. But the ultimate thing is it comes down to identification of a problem that you need to overcome or a challenge or an opportunity that you're presented with. Um, how you're going to go about overcoming that, and then what are the action steps you're going to take. And so that is how, that is kind of the root of the digital asset management strategy canvas is kind of thinking about it that way. So if the first thing you need to think about is what is the challenge or problem we want to overcome, that's the first question you would work through on the canvas and try to get alignment around what really is that problem. The next set of things that we recommend that you work on, and this is all laid out in the guide that accompanies the canvas, um, but I would say the next step in my suggestion would be to think about the use cases. So that's kind of the heart of this DAM strategy canvas. Um, if you think about a, a strategy being a response to a, you know, a, a particular challenge, diagnosis of a challenge, um, a guiding policy, and then a set of actions, what we're arguing with this damn strategy canvas and, and this approach is that the guiding policy piece is the use cases you're going to be addressing. So that's a really critical part of it. Mm. Which use cases? And this is, in this case, we're talking about high level use cases. Who needs to do what with digital assets? And that's important. It's like not who right. needs to do what with digital asset management technology. That's not the question you should be asking. It's more about the assets and what they need to do with them. And then the accompanying piece of that is which assets and which metadata allow them to answer the questions they need to use those assets effectively. So that's kind of the second step is thinking about those use cases. And then we get into the prioritization of those use cases. And then finally, the, the next question is, is to enable those use cases, what are the actions we're going to need to take? And so the canvas has a bunch of prompts to get you thinking about the different things you're gonna have to be thinking about in order to deliver on those use cases. So that's like, do we need technology? Do we need in process improvement? Do we need data quality improvement? Do we need um, uh, governance, Think things like that. So it's kind of guiding your thinking around which actions are gonna be important to deliver on those use cases. And then the final step is what does success look like? And I, I think that you could do that early but I like to think about that kind of coming at the end once you've gone full circle from this 
challenge you're addressing to, okay, what does success look like? What do we, what does it look like if we win, you know, if we achieve our goal? So that's, that's the overview of the strategy canvas in a nutshell. That's fantastic. Thank you. Uh, that's a great description. And it strikes me as you're talking, like, I wonder if you would agree with this statement or not. It seems to me that that success, what does success look like, might for many people be the only thing that their strategy is, right? We, we want to uh, be able to have assets in the hands of the right people at the right time, uh, whenever they need it with the right information, right? That's kind of what success looks like maybe, or, or we want to leverage our digital assets to increase revenue, something like that. But I love that you, before you get there, you're actually kind of laying out this process that says, how are we gonna get there, those actions and, and broken into categories. Does that, does that sound right? Am I thinking about that right? Absolutely. And actually, um, my thinking on strategy in general derives a lot from um, Richard Rumelt and his book, Good Strategy, Bad Strategy, The Difference and Why It Matters. And he criticizes um, a lot of what he, he calls a social contagion of the way strategy has been deployed in, in our society today, um, which really is just a set of ambitions. Like exactly like you said, it's just those success things. It's just, we wanna do X. And so he he, that idea of the strategy is a, a diagnosis of the problem, a guiding policy and a set of actions to get you to that goal. It's, it's a lot more concrete and tangible. It's not just, we want to reach this goal. We have this set of ambitions. And also what can tend to happen is people get very lofty about those ambitions and the action steps to get there are lost. And, and, and they're not part of, if they're not part of that mm -hmm. conversation, it becomes really hard to see what it's gonna take to achieve those. And so, Forcing yourself to think through this in a more kind of uh, diligent, step-by-step -step way to some extent will kind of help, I think, drive the success of actually reaching some of those ambitions rather than just being kind of out there as lofty goals that we keep trying for and not somehow not hitting. I think that's the risk. I love that it's rooted in action. That's, that's fantastic. Um, so I wonder if you could tell us why now? Why did you create the damn strategy canvas now? What was the need that you saw or the impetus for, for making it happen? It comes from our experience with our clients. So I, on the one hand, we have, we have certain clients who will come to us and say, can you help us with the digital asset management strategy? And so that's kind of forced my thinking around this topic. But then we also have some organizations we work with that come to us that just say, can you help us implement this tool? And there's not a lot of strategic thinking around it, a lot of prioritization that's going into it. And so in those cases, we almost have to force the conversation around strategy. So if we, if we cut, and again, we kind of come back to the core of, the, of what strategy is and what it does, it helps you scope. It helps you figure out how to use limited resources. And it kind of helps you figure out, um, you know, how to set priorities so that you can achieve goals. Um, so, so we have to do some of that thinking with our clients, even if they're not thinking about it. Um, and so that, that just is a recurring theme in the work that we've been doing over the years. Um, and so I wanted to kind of create a succinct and repeatable method that we could use in our work um, with our clients to help kind of guide these conversations as well as, you know, provide that as a tool for, for anyone else who'd like to use it. So that's, that's the sort of why now is like building over time as we just continue to run into the same issues over and over again. Like again, lofty set of ambitions, very short time frames to reach them, but which were quite unrealistic in many cases um, with some of those implementation projects that we were doing. And, and so we would you know, need to start and say, well, what use cases are we solving for? And what is this end state we're trying to reach now? Um, and, and see if we can set some priorities within those parameters to help make it more tangible and achievable. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So again, it's rooted in kind of your, your own work, very pragmatic and practical. So you've, you've been putting these concepts to use, uh, for a while before creating the, the canvas. Yeah, absolutely. I think we've been using, um, some version of this for a while. So this was the codified, you know, edition of, of the work that we've been doing. 
When I look out at the landscape of organizations that are procuring and implementing digital asset management systems, for many of them, the implementation of that digital asset management system, they may think of as the end point, that that is the achievement of a strategy or their goal, um, as opposed to wrapping a strategy around the actual utilization and operation of that digital asset management um, program. In your work with organizations, how many do you think uh, you know, come to the table with a digital asset management strategy versus not having a strategy at all? I mean, if we, if we take the idea of strategy as you know, there's formal strategy, like big S strategy and little s strategy. So, I may, so if I'm looking at it from either perspective, I'd say you know, a very small percentage have really thought about it in, in either a big way or a small way. Um, and so what will tend to happen is, um, you know, there's some, there is some problem. That's why they decided to invest in digital asset management. And maybe it's a problem with an existing damn solution that needs to scale or that needs to be expanded to, you know, beyond one team to a larger group or to the enterprise or we need to consolidate multiple um, siloed asset management systems. What, whenever there's a major initiative around digital asset management, um, I think that's when strategy for that work tends to be become important. So it's not like the day-to-day -day work needs its own strategy, it's kind of the major initiative. So at that point, you're investing resources, time, money, you know, everything, you're, you're gonna make an investment in some kind of initiative. It's a response to a problem, but it's it's not, damn for damn sake, there's some other kind of end state or goal you're trying to reach. So it, it depends on where you are, I think, in a hierarchy of damn outcomes. So the very first level is, let's just create a single source of truth. We need all this stuff to be in one place. You know, it's all over the place. It's scattered around different file sharing systems and siloed systems and people's personal Dropbox, and it's on people's desktops or videos all over hard drives. And so that's usually the first Kind of goal is let's just get a single source of truth. So um, just even acknowledging like that's what we're trying to do here is kind of an initial um, step in that in that strategic thinking. So it's not just implement the dam by X date because um, that doesn't connect to the outcome. Um, so I think making that connection is really important. And then I also want to draw the distinction between a a strategy and a, and a roadmap or a kind of a de de detailed implementation plan. So if your, your strategy is kind of guiding the decisions that are going to drive the implementation plan, the implementation plan is like you said, it's just get the thing launched. That is part of the plan. That's a milestone that you need to hit in order to, to kind of work toward that bigger goal of single source of truth or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, I think you need to, to kind of approach this as in a way that, that again, sequences how you're gonna focus on that and try not to do too much at once. I think organizations that are especially new to DAM don't realize what in, how much investment is gonna be, how much it's gonna take to get to success. And I think they, um, you know, kind of end up getting stuck sometimes if they, if they just go, let's get to launch by the state, then we'll, we'll have succeeded. Let me recap a little bit uh, and I'm wondering if you can expand on it a bit more, but for someone who's listening who thinks, why do I need a damn strategy? Some of the things I've heard you say so far are, it sounds like it solves a problem. That's kind of the, it sounds like if we're, that's where you start, right? What's the problem we're solving for? Um, so it's gonna solve some pain points. It's gonna help you overcome some challenges. Uh, it also sounds like um, a part of the why would be to enable action. As you've outlined it, it gives you some concrete steps that you can take, uh, and by you, an individual, a team, uh, folks within an operation, dam operation, folks outside of, um, what are, are there other whys uh, that you can answer uh, about like why, why should an organization uh, implement a dam strategy that I haven't touched on or did, does that summarize it? Those are, I think those are the main, those are the key points um, so I think we could flip it, that question on its head and say, what could happen if you don't have some form of a strategy? If you're under, if you're undertaking a major initiative um, in with regard to digital asset management, um, 
you know, that there can be a lot of, the lot can go wrong if you are not aligned with, you know, the stakeholders aren't aligned on what it's supposed to solve for. And this is also change management theory 101 is like, what, what problem is the change trying to solve? So that's, like, that's kind of the same core question. Um, and then, you know, so if, you, if you're not kind of aligned on that, it's easy to, to take on way too much. It's easy to kind of um, lose, lose time, lose money, go way off track um, and start to lose the buy-in and support of the stakeholders. So it's, you know, it's kind of why should you do it is, well, why shouldn't you is because there's a lot of risk involved in this type of investment and um, you want to get it right to kind of get that buy-in. And the other, the end result of this is often um, some form of organizational change. You're going to ask people to change their behavior at the end of the day. Once you have this thing kind of implemented, launched or evolved to whatever state it's going to be. And those people need to be brought along in that process. And so Mm. that strategy is also really important for thinking about how are we going to communicate what this is for? What's the benefit to the organization? What's the benefit to the individual? Um, and what's, what should they expect when? Because that's another thing is if you, if you, if you don't have a strategy, um, that's guiding the prioritization and the sequencing of the work, because that's really what it comes down to, um, people are going to have lofty expectations about what it means to them, when they're going to get some benefit from it. And, um, if you can't deliver on those assumptions, they're going to start to lose their support for it. And so this is when the tides start to sh- turn and, and people kind of, uh, you know, they're, they're not going to support the thing once, once it does come around because, you know, I've been expecting this or that and you're not delivering that. It's a, it can generate a lot of frustration. So it, it, it helps you be clear um, with, with the organization and the stakeholders too. So it sounds like it gets people to work cohesively in alignment to overcome problems, to, to get return on investment, that return being probably different for each organization, depending on what the value is. Thinking here about, you know, obviously in most, if not all organizations, digital asset management is one department, one operation, one thing out of many within a larger organization, right? You might have marketing, you've got sales, you've got uh, production or operations, other operations. You've got you know, executive, uh, an overarching company strategy. How have you seen, or how do you think about a damn strategy kind of working with, integrating with other strategies throughout a company? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think a damn strategy has to align with the broader strategy that it sits within. So that could be that the damn strategy aligns with just a the departmental or business unit or org strategy that you're in. So if it's marketing, kind of the dam strategy is aligning with the marketing strategy. But if it's, let's say it's an enterprise dam, then you are looking at the, the full business strategy. And what is, what is this organization kind of trying to, to achieve? Um, you know, what's its goals and, and what is it that this particular initiative around digital asset management is going to do to enable or support those goals. So there's a strong connection between those things. So there's some, like I said before, there's some ambition or dream outcome for this dam that's, that is what's gonna have that connection to this broader strategy. Mm. So if it's, so let's take like an apparel company um, that is shifting to um, digital product creation. So they're gonna use 3D modeling um, in order to, uh, kind of create, have faster time to market, reduce their carbon footprint by moving away from physical samples that are, are typically the way that um, products in that space are done, shipping them all over the world between providers in Asia, US or wherever um, to kind of this 3D model. And there's a, so that is maybe a kind of more corporate level strategy. We're gonna shift to digital product creation in order to improve our time to market reduce our carbon footprint footprint, and create tailored experiences for our customers. So if you think about that bigger picture strategy and then you step back and say, well, where does DAM fit into that? It has a huge role to play because it's, um, you know, all the, the files that are going to go into that 
process of recreating the, the, the apparel now are going to be digital. They're going to need to be organized. They're going to need to be put into a data pipeline that allows for, for that information to kind of flow through the production process down to marketing and sales and kind of ultimately e-commerce and end user experience. So it's incredibly closely connected. And I think you can take a similar type of example. Let's take a museum. So a museum wants to, you know, their broader strategic goal is we want to reach new audiences, um, engage with them in new ways, both in person and online. So that's like a, you know, a kind of the, the big picture ambition. So how does digital asset management fit into that? Again, it has a huge role to play um, because the museum's digital assets are its collections, um, you know, images of those collections. And it's how are we going to reach our audiences, connect with our audiences, we're going to need those assets in order to achieve that bigger picture goal and the data that accompanies them. And again, it's getting this, these digital assets, they're just a form of data into a data pipeline that kind of allows this bigger picture strategic vision that the broader organization has. So, and you can kind of take that down levels as well. If you're, you know, you're the marketing department, it's just the marketing dam, and the marketing's overall strategy is to, you know, increase the, the um, you know, targeting of campaigns. We need to measure the, the, the impact of our campaign and kind of height. We need high performing and we need more kind of feedback loops and insights and measurement as we go. So the dam is, again, a, a piece of data in that pipeline. It's going to help you with kind of getting that content out in an efficient manner. It's going to help with capturing data and insights about performance um, kind of on the on the other side and allow for more insightful and kind of smarter production moving forward. So there's just a lot of ways it all connects, I think. Thanks for painting such a great picture and different context there. It's interesting as you're talking, I'm, you know, you're talking about kind of problems of, I mean, goals and problems of an enterprise of different departments. Um, and I'm thinking about the person who sits down with the canvas and we've said, uh, you know, start with the problem. What's the problem you're trying to solve? And from what you've just said, it makes me wonder, you know, the person who sits down and you kind of pointed to this earlier because you said, you know, it's about not what can you do with the dam. It's what can you do with the digital assets? The dam is like a means to an end. Um, and the problem, I guess it makes this is a question. I'm just I'm just thinking out loud here. The problem that the person who sits down with the strategy canvas uh, might aim at is not the problem of the dam operation, but rather the problem of the company um, vision or strategy that they can help overcome. Is that the right way to think about that? Or if I got that wrong? No, I think you're, you're right. The problem in this case, it does relate to the digital assets. So, Digital asset management is a solution. It, it's not the problem. I mean, maybe you say, oh, this dam sucks and it's a problem. Okay, that maybe that's true. And we can kind of go down that path. But the problem you're trying to focus in on and identify is the one of the digital assets themselves and their, their use in, in kind of delivering on some bigger goal or you know, success criteria. So that's generally the starting point. And so, again, that's why I said earlier as well, like when you're thinking about use cases, it's not use cases for a dam system, it's use cases for digital assets. Who needs them and what do they need to do with them? That's where the thinking could, should kind of live because you can get stuck in thinking about, again, it's sort of like looking inward at dam as as the problem or as the solution or as the thing. And it's all kind of inwardly focused. But if you're not connecting the digital asset management solution to the business needs, I don't think you're doing it right. And so that's that's why this canvas is trying to guide the thinking around that. What problem are we really talking about here? Which use cases are we really talking about here? Um, so that you can, again, prioritize and make sure that you're you're kind of solving the right thing. Again, just thinking pragmatically about the person who goes and downloads this damn strategy canvas to create their own strategy. What do you think they need? Um, you know, let's say that it's let's say it's the dam manager or the director of creative operations or something that goes and does this. They sit down. 
who else do they need at the table for this? What other information do they want to be sure to have in order to be able to, you know, create create something that's going to be useful and meaningful? Um, what should folks be thinking about kind of as the prerequisites or preparedness that they need to come to the table with? You might be listening to this episode and thinking, this sounds awesome, but how can I do this for myself? Lucky for you, you can download AVP's Damn Strategy Canvas for free at weareavp.com slash free hyphen resources. That's weareavp.com slash free hyphen resources. The Damn Strategy Canvas is your roadmap to creating the perfect damn strategy all on one page. And if you're enjoying the Damn Right podcast, please rate, like, follow, subscribe on your podcast platform of choice. And stay up to date with me and the Damn Right podcast on LinkedIn at linkedin.com slash in slash C Lysinic. That's linkedin.com slash in slash C Lysinic. Again, just thinking pragmatically about the person who goes and downloads this damn strategy canvas to create their own strategy. What do you think they need? Um, you know, let's say that it's, let's say it's the damn manager or the director of creative operations or something that goes and does this. They sit down. Who else do they need at the table for this? What other information do they want to be sure to have in order to be able to, you know, create create something that's going to be useful and meaningful? Um, what should folks be thinking about kind of as the prerequisites or preparedness that they need to come to the table with? Yeah. So I think um, if you're if you're a lone damn strategist, you know, more power to you. But you're you're going to want to talk to other stakeholders at, at minimum, if not fully engage them in the process. But you know, sometimes you don't want to go overboard with the forma formalities of this, like we're doing a damn strategy and you all need, you're all invited and come to my workshop. That could be great. Um, but it may just be, you're going to need to talk to people, interview them, learn about them, ask the right questions, um, to understand, you know, how they're thinking about it. If you're tasked with, uh, and let's, let's assume that the person we're talking about here is tasked with some kind of digital asset management initiative. They're leading it. They're supposed to kind of see it through. There's some other people that are aware of that or that kind of made a decision to invest in that. So those people you need to talk to or bring them to the table. Those are kind of critical um, thinkers in this space. So that's probably the sponsors of, of this, whoever kind of made that decision or gave the green light to, um, to, to do something about it. Um, maybe you don't have a green light yet, but um, they're the ones that are concerned with it. So somebody in the kind of more senior leadership picture at whatever level that makes sense, that's critical because you need to get their alignment and buy-in. And then also because we're talking about data, we're talking about assets at large volumes usually that have to be stored and use technology to manage them, you're probably gonna need your technology partners in the room too. So somebody in IT, uh, whoever your business liaison is there to, to your group is going to be important. They also don't like it when you make major investments in technology without their input. So they're the ones that are going to have to do, deal with the technical debt down the road. So please involve your technology partners. <laughs> and then I think the other group to make sure you include is, um, is the stakeholders who are the beneficiaries or those impacted by this, the, the dam initiative. So, um, you know, those are probably the users or the, the people who are going to be creating or contributing the assets, you know, or the ones that are going to be downstream using it. So representatives of those who this is for, they need to have a voice in um, kind of setting priorities, making sure we're clearly aligned on the challenge we're trying to solve for and what a success looks like. So I'd say those are the three main groups, senior leadership, technology, and your major um, kind of uh, stakeholder partners that are that are going to be affected by it. The picture you painted for us earlier makes clear that digital asset management exists in all types of forms and fashions within organizations. It can be multiple dams and multiple departments. It could be an enterprise dam. It could be no dam manager or, or, or kind of centralized uh, operations around the dam. It's a distributed team that shares ownership, or it could be a, a dam operations that serves as like a centralized service to the rest of the organization. Are there models that you have seen 
which tend to lend themselves to being more successful at creating and executing on strategy rather than less? Yes. This is a fun topic that I enjoy very much. What, what does the damn literal operational optimal model look like? Um, I think that the best model has some element of um, a, a clear sponsor or sponsors or like tightly aligned if it's more than one person. Um, some knowledgeable, experienced um, kind of product owner of the system. Um, and ideally in some, you know, maybe it's the same person, but somebody who's um, creating the, the rules, the guidelines, the standards and, and all that stuff. So sent at, a, at some level, a central set of thinking and um, kind of guideline and guardrail creation for the, for the system. Um, that works best when it's like a small team. Um, at least like a minimum. And then, and then again, it depends on the scale, but I've, so I think hub and spoke models can work really well. So you've got that central dam team who are kind of like making the major decisions around, around the system and its evolution and how people should use it and what's available to them and taking input from users around feature requests. And they're the ones that interface with the vendor, et cetera, et cetera. And then maybe there's for if this is a large enterprise kind of model, let's say there's there's individual teams or business units who are sort of tenants of that system or users of it, um, and they probably have a point of contact that's kind of the lead on their side, and that person is the liaison with the central team. I really like that model for a very large organization. Um, so at a very small level, if you're just kind of in a working group and like the dam is just for like a very small creative team, I think you can get away with a, a shared kind of contributor model where, um, you know, everyone who's gonna be adding assets sort of collectively manages it, but that falls apart really fast. Um, mm -hmm. If nobody's sort of mining the store and kind of, so if you took your, your like grocery store and you just let all the vendors and suppliers just put whatever they want on the shelves, however they want. And maybe they forgot to put the price tag on some stuff and like hook it up to the register. It would be chaos pretty quickly. So I, I don't love it. I know it's the reality in a lot of cases where you just need to have, you, nobody has the time to sort of be the oversight person and it's just a small dam and you're not a very big team. I think you can get away with that um, for a little while. But as it grows, as it scales and these things, tend to do um, as, you know, as we're kind of more in the space where audio, video, image, you know, is the predominant form of content over text. Um, and that's kind of what our organizations are producing as well. Then we're only going to need to kind of increase um, the, the kind of operation around these assets. And so some, some kind of smart um, expert thinking to guide people in how to use the system, I think is always gonna be critical. For folks that are in that less than ideal scenario that you painted, it sounds like mitigation of the risk that comes along with that could be in the form of thorough documentation. I mean, it points right at the heart, really the whole, your whole response points right at governance, it sounds like, do I have, does that sound right? Yeah, that's true. For folks that are in that situation and they can't change tomorrow, like what would be the words of wisdom that you would give to them about how to uh, help ensure that it doesn't lead to uh, disastrous outcomes? If they're in that situation of sort of a shared contributor model and they're thinking about it, that means, you know, congratulations, like you're the one that's going to get stuck with the damn problem, but <laughs> that's okay because you care. <laughs> so you've identified this isn't going to work. You know, the, I'm talking to you like this person that you just talked about because um, you, you had that insight and you realize it's not working and you're you're kind of going to push for some change now. Doesn't mean you're going to get stuck with it forever, but you're the one who, as a user, as a beneficiary of the tool, are saying, raising the flag of, hey, this isn't working. This is not right. We need to do something different. We really need somebody who's in charge of this thing because, you know, it's a big mess. No one can find anything. Um you know, it's, it's just, uh, it's not working. It's not fulfilling the, the goals we set out for this. Um, 
you know, people are still misusing assets or, or whatever it is. Um, so as that kind of whistleblower, you're going to be the person that's going to have to advocate for something different. Um, but I think you also know best what the problems are and, and what's happening as a result of that not working. And it's probably just what's happening is you're ending up in the same place you were before you had the tool. People are still squirreling away their assets on their personal drive drives and then on hard drives and, and whatever. They're not contributing to the dam and they are misusing them and they're not complying with brand guidelines and they're not using licensed assets appropriately. And they are reshooting things that you already have footage of. Um, so yeah, I think, um, you know, raise that alarm, <laughs> beat the drum and, and try to paint the bigger picture of what's the, what's at stake? What's the impact? You know, for, again, if you put on that strategist hat, think about, you know, what is it we're trying to achieve as an organization? Um, what does success look like and how we're not going to get there if we leave this as the status quo? Um, we need to do something different. So hopefully you can kind of inspire your, you know, your kind of leadership, um, you know, connect with what's their concern. What are they thinking about? What's keeping them up at night? What are their, again, that bigger picture strategy they're trying to work toward? Um, that's, that's the best way. I think if you try to, if you just kind of whine and complain, I say this to my son all the time, like stop whining and complaining. So that's, um, that's, <laughs> <laughs> it's not effective in getting me to give you what, you want, but I guess sometimes it is because he does it a lot. Anyway, don't, don't just do, you know, kind of complain about what's not working. <laughs> try to, try to figure out what, you know, what does, um, you know, what provide the kind of constructive um, ideas and, and input and what could success look like. So yeah, if you're that person, it sounds like you're, you know, you got, you got stuck with that job and, and you've got to be the one to be the loud voice to, for change. So whining and complaining is one tool in the toolbox, but uh, but not the most effective. I don't think so. The other thing that I that the focus in on governance makes me think about is you have another creation, uh, the dam operational model, and I wonder there will be people who look at the canvas and the model. Um, could you tell us how to think about those things? As you know, how would you plug those together? How do they work together? So the dam operational model is is kind of um, what we came up with. Um, that it's all the things that you need to have a successful dam operation. So it covers um, technology, of course, but also um, you have people, which, which people, stakeholders do you need, which are important, um, which processes or governance, of course, around things like decision-making, standard setting, policy creation, um, processes, I think I said, measurement, um, and of course, like, Kind of goal setting and tracking in general. So, and then there's the centerpiece, which is like the why of all this. That's where the strategy lives. So the, the dam strategy kind of sits in the, in our model, it's a sort of circle with these seven competencies and like there's one right in the middle. And that, that's the, that's the strategy because it's, um, it, it, the, the operational model can be used at any, kind of stage of development or maturity. So you can use it one way if you're just starting out. You can use it another way if you're kind of on a business as usual path. You can use it another way if you're on a scaling path. So, but the center part of that is always going to orient where your focus is, where your prioritization is, and sort of in that goal setting category, which guides everything, it all leads it from the strategy. So once we've decided our strategy, we can then create a roadmap, we can track toward it, we can measure against it, we can report on it, um, and we can enable and optimize all the other things around you know, who, the people, the processes, the governance, the technology to, to deliver on that strategy. So, so they fit together, I guess I would say that strategy is, is the center of the entire thing that guides all of the rest. So I imagine that some people might take the dam operational model and there's like a a, a, a self-assessment or a health dam health score sheet that we have and they might they might score their health on it and say okay i'm not doing so great on uh, governance and technology or and processes i could imagine that someone might take that then and say well where do i need to improve in those areas, how do I need to improve? And and think that that is my strategy. That's, you know, if I can answer those questions, how, how do I do better at governance? How do I do better at technology? 
um, and the areas that I'm not strong in and then damn operational model. Um, that that would be my action items towards towards achieving my outcomes. Is that what would you say to that? Does what would you say to the to that being? You know, how does that play off those action items in the damn operational model to improve your health? Play off of the action items in the strategy. Yeah, there, I mean, it's not it's not wrong. And there's action items, and then there's action items. I think when I think of the strategy, it's not action items like this task, this task, this task. Um, I think that's the, again, the implementation roadmap. And if you're identifying problems with, you know, the process or the governance and you want to fine tune them, that goes in the roadmap. Um, and, but the, the initiative or in the investment in those areas is what's going to sh show up in the strategy. So, um, in the canvas, we call them key initiatives and actions. So it's not necessarily an action item list, but it's a set of key actions that like, um, or initiatives that are going to be, they're going to enable the strategy to work. So again, it's, it's at a different level of granularity. So, um, if you, if you want to, if you're fine tuning what's already there, I think that's, again, it, it's important. You want to optimize, you want to continue to, you know, continuously do that. And that's why in the, operational model, we kind of call one of those areas continuous improvement. And that's sort of our ongoing optimization. Um, that should be in your roadmap. But you probably have a bigger picture thing in your strategy that's that's um, all of those fine tuning actions are, are working toward. So um, it's just kind of, again, like it's a different level of, of granularity and thinking. So the strategy itself doesn't have, you know, individual dates necessarily for each action. It's more like we want to achieve X and we're going to invest in Y to do that. And so that's really what that looks like. The analogy that comes to mind for me as you're talking about the damn operational model versus the canvas is if we think about like a car, your car running and how well it runs, he's like, it might be the damn operational model. You know, is the engine uh, running well? Has the oil been changed? Is your windshield wiper is good? Uh, and the strategy is more about, do you know where you're going? Can you get to your destination? Does the, you know, are you, are you steering the vehicle in the right direction? Is that a way to think about it that that works? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it, yeah, I think I, I had not thought of that analogy, but yeah, totally makes sense. Yeah. The, the car and it's kind of inner workings is one thing it's trying to get you somewhere, but yeah, the strategy is more like, where are you trying to go and what are the steps you're going to need to take to get there? Like, we're going to have to get on the interstate and we're going to have to, you know, take a left here and this and that kind of thing. So I think that works. Yeah. I like that analogy actually. I wanted to touch on one thing that's in the, the, what I'll call the guide that accompanies the strategy canvas. You use a statistic in there that comes from brand folder and demand metric that says 77% of study participants were satisfied with their digital asset management solution when deployment was completed quickly. And there's other stats in there that say about how many people were basically dissatisfied when it took longer than six months. I'm wondering, why do you think that is? What's going on there? Why do you think deployment time is such a strong determining factor of success and user satisfaction? Well, I think um, it kind of goes back to something we were saying earlier around managing expectations and kind of getting that goodwill and support and buy-in. Um, and when it takes too long, there's probably multiple things at play. One is, well, you probably didn't have really a well thought out strategy. The scope wasn't clear. You know, the act action items weren't clear. And most likely you took on too much. So the time to value is way too long. Mm. And I think that's, that's the key with something like this is when the, when the success hinges on adoption, time to value is absolutely critical um, because you need those people to adopt it, to buy yeah. into it and have to in, kind of be in sync with what it's for, what's expected of them and by when. And if you keep kind of pushing that can down the road and kind of muddling that communication an expectation, um, I think people just start to get fed up and lose trust in the whole initiative. I think 
that's my guess as to what's going on. So you're kind of poorly communicating. The execution's kind of getting all over the place. You're trying to do too much. You're not having any, like, the short-term wins aren't there. Like, the transformation that was proposed is not coming through. I think people just kind of get fed up and and um, and they, they just lose their faith in the entire thing and it's 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 ability to to deliver on what it was supposed to and i think that can have pretty severe long-term implications to the success it's hard to write that ship once you've gone right. in that direction so time is important as as a factor but it i'm also reading into what you just said that the duration when it lags or it takes an exceptionally long time is a, it could also be a symptom of a larger problem it sounds like yeah i think I think it is a symptom of a larger problem. Yeah. The problem is you didn't have a strategy. Right. For <laughs> so you didn't have kind of a clear point of focus, clear like use cases you're prioritizing. Cause that's the key point is what use cases are you going to solve for in what order? It doesn't mean solve for all of them at once. If we have five main use cases and these are pretty high level, they can be pretty big. It doesn't mean do them all at once. It means they're sequenced in a way so you start to deliver benefits and value to those use cases in a sequence, in an order, and they should be sequenced in such a way that um, the each one lays a foundation for the next. So each one, each sub subsequent one you solve for isn't like starting from zero. You've already got with the first use case, you've you've created a a layer, and by the time you get to the end of all those use cases. Um, You've, you've solved for 80% of the needs that that particular strategy is solving for. What tends to happen in cases where it takes way too long, some cases they just really don't know what goes into setting up, implementing, and making decisions around the dam. And so that can just stall things. But even if you are more aware and you kind of do understand what, what's going to go into that, that's the case where I just see people taking on way too much. Well, Kara, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I think I'm really excited about people hearing this and putting the canvas to use. I want to end with one final question that I ask all of the guests on on the Damn Right podcast. And that's totally different than, than having to do with the uh, strategy conversation. And that is, what is the last song that you added to your favorites playlist or liked? Well, I'm going to have to say that there is a difference between my like songs and my favorites because my son, who's eight years old, rules the like songs playlist. That is his playlist. So I won't tell you what the last song that was added to that. My personal playlist of favorites. Um, I, uh, well, it's been a little while since I added a song, but kind of a, maybe earlier, a little Mid, mid to last year was the last time I put a song onto it, sadly. Um, but it was Candy by Fever Ray. And they're a Swedish pop electro artist um, that used to be part of the, 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 the duo um, The Knife in the earlier 2000s. And this, this is their, their solo act as Fever Ray. And the song Candy, um, that was like the last song that really kind of got under my skin and I couldn't stop listening to. So... That's the last one on the playlist. All right. So listeners, go find it and pump it up while you start working on your damn strategy canvas. It'll be a good soundtrack to it. <laughs> no, don't think that's don't. the right soundtrack. Okay. Well, what? All right. If, if, if it okay. works for you, Here, Here's a worry. question. <laughs> Give us a soundtrack, a song yeah. that would be good for filling out the damn strategy canvas. All right. Good question. Um, when I was making it, I was listening to a lot of... Um, um, like the Isley Brothers oh, okay. and things like that. So, so maybe you know, give you some good energy, good okay. vibes. Yeah, All give right. that a shot. Interesting. Sounds good. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Kara. It's been super fun, and uh, I'm really excited about uh, folks being able to hear this. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And if folks have any questions or feedback about the Damn Strategy Canvas, then reach out. Let us know. Great. I'll put that you. contact info in the show notes. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Sounds good. You might be listening to this episode and thinking, this sounds awesome, but how can I do this for myself? Lucky for you, you can download AVP's Damn Strategy Canvas for free 
at weareavp.com slash free hyphen resources. That's weareavp.com slash free hyphen resources. The Dam Strategy Canvas is your roadmap to creating the perfect dam strategy all on one page. And if you're enjoying the Dam Right podcast, please rate, like, follow, subscribe on your podcast platform of choice. And stay up to date with me and the Dam Right podcast on LinkedIn at linkedin.com slash in slash C Lysinic. That's linkedin.com slash in slash C Lysinic.